<laughs> Good job, all right. Hi guys, okay, welcome back. Now, I'm working on my purple six strain base right here, the carbon. In the last video, you saw that we, we uh, got all this fingerboard off, we got it all ready to go. The, the truss rod's fitting in there now, it took a little bit of work. And you also probably saw that uh, I have the ebony fingerboard ready to go, okay? Now, I'm gonna have to do some, a little bit of adjusting to it. It obviously needs to be cut down the size. I have to cut this extra wood off the front, but it has to be centered there and centered down here or else you don't want the frets to be crooked. That's very important. So that's gonna be centered like that. I'm gonna cut it to shape. That's the next step. All right, so I'm ready to shape this piece of ebony and try to get it on this base. All right, so first, let's lay this out. I wanna make some marks so I can get started in cutting this. Okay, like I said before, we have to make sure it's centered. It would be nice to use that edge, wouldn't it? That would be wonderful, wouldn't it? Except it's bigger up here, smaller down here, and that's gonna twist those lines a little bit and not be straight. So since I don't have a nice sharp white pen, I'm gonna go ahead and, and tape this so I can make a nice mark across it. Okay, now I'm gonna lay it back like this. I wanna center up that. And I'm gonna center it up here. Okay. That's looking good there. And check up here. Okay. Alright, I'm just gonna try to make a line underneath here. Let's see if we can get a nice pin mark under here. Okay, well, sort of. Anyways, I can use my straight edge to draw that a little better now. All right, so now I got my line drawn right there. I'm ready to make the first cut. Wish me luck. All right, so I'm clamping a straight edge along my line here. You don't have to have it, but it'll just kind of keep me in check here. Because I don't want to ruin this nice piece of wood. <laughs> okay. You got to be careful when you use clamps like this. If you're not careful, you can leave a, a clamp mark on it. So if you take the time to put something on there, sometimes it's helpful. All right, so I'm ready to make a cut here. All right, so I got my first cut made. Now I'm gonna clean that up and make that real nice and straight before I cut this other side because I don't wanna cut it too small. But so far, that's not too shabby. Now I'm just using a little handmade little block sander so I get a nice edge. You might love that custom touch there. Uh, anyways, it's coming together. It's already looking just a few times over. It's looking better, but I got some more cleanup to do. I want that to be real nice, flat and straight. 
I want to get this edge real nice. Straight and looking good as I can. I also want to round off any little parts that could splinter because I don't want to splinter this before we get it even glued on there. It's coming together. It needs a little fine sanding. I'm not too worried about the finish. It's probably gonna get, it's gonna get chipped up a little bit anyways. And I'm still deciding of whether I'm gonna refinish the whole guitar anyways. But one thing at a time. All right, so now I need to mark the other side here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, kind of clamp this in place just to kind of hold it where I want it. Okay, I'm gonna hang it back this way just a hair. All right, now I'm gonna make a mark right along here. All right, so now I'm ready to cut the other side. I got the basic cut made on both sides and now I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this edge here it's not perfect yet all right guys so I am ready to glue I think I think we're ready to glue this thing up I left just a hair over here I can I can hit that later it's just a hair but I'd rather be able to Make sure I get that glued real nice and without some kind of lip happening there. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play it safe right there. All right, we are ready to glue. All right, for this hole up here, I didn't want this rod shifting back and forth, so I got a little old-fashioned JB weld. When you mix these two together. It becomes rock solid. That's not going to be able to go back and forth or anymore. So I'm getting ready to clamp it up and glue it. I don't want my clamps to make marks anywhere. So I'm just grabbing whatever I can to make it work. I'll tape these on here. And my clamp will go on top of there and not hurt the guitar anyway. It's not ideal, it must look strange, but I don't have a straight edge right now, so I'm just gonna make do with what I got. All right, so I'm ready to glue on the fretboard. I got it cut. It's all nice and flat. It's gonna fit real nice. The best thing to use is just basic wood glue. I found out that that works the best for me. Uh, some people use hide glue. Uh, I've had issues in the past where uh, my base has got really hot in the back of a semi truck and my base tech called me one day and said, hey, Barry, your base necks are all falling off. And this was on tour with Ted Nugent and uh, on the original Sparks bases we used a thing called hide glue, but when it gets hot, it gets soft. So. We re-glued another thing. Also, I noticed the difference in tone when I when we re-glued them with wood glue. It, sat, it the tone was better. It's a better connection, and uh, it works better. Yeah. Leo, are you ready for Dad to get this fingerboard glued? Yeah. You are. Okay. Let's do it. All right. When I put on glue, just like you do when you're building wood cabinets or whatever, you want to, especially here. I need every. It needs to be solidly covered because I need I need all that wood I can get for this to stick. And I want it to be as strong as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and and just glue this like that.
And then I need to go back. The best thing for me is just to go back with my finger and then work all. I need this to really. Plus, you don't want to lose it. If you just put big globs of glue, it's just going to squirt out everywhere. You need to have a nice, even, flattened, just get it all. It saves a lot of mess later, too. Just kind of. It doesn't matter if I go over those metal things, it's fine. Oh, that's fine. Okay, let me put a little bit more on there. I'm not too worried about it slipping in around the truss rod because it's not really going to stick to the metal and it's not enough. Once I adjust that, it's just going to pop right out of there. I taped the back and I put these little wrenches down here. That's quite funny, but I didn't have anything else to protect that. So now I'm ready to lay this down there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clamp this up here. I'm just going to kind of, kind of snug it up right in there. So I can move it around. Okay, now I'm going to use this up here. If you don't protect the wood with something, you're going to get clamp marks, and they're kind of hard to get out. So I want to, you don't want any lip right there. So I got to make sure they clamp it really in the right spot. Okay, let me try another one in the middle here. Looking good so far. Okay. So I got it clamped up. I got it clamped up. It doesn't look too bad. I'll let that dry and then I can uh, fine tune the edges and make sure that neck is flat and I'll refret it just like I did the Rickenbacker recently. Leo, what do you think? How did it come out? Is it good? Yeah. All right. With a little luck, this base will ride again, guys. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.